Hey everybody! Welcome to Let's Look at Crooks the Big Heist. I don't know what was up with my intro there, uh, but this is a game that is coming out August 25th, so we have like a seven week advanced look at it here, so keep in mind what you're seeing, uh, you know, is presently a work in progress and is subject to change, but it does come out relatively soon, so this should be pretty representative of what you're going to get in the final product, I am assuming. Uh, it's published by Calypso and is made by Skill Tree Studios, who I could only find a Wikipedia entry on them in Dutch, but they appear to be a German strategy game software development company that previously worked on a PlayStation 3 game that I've never played. But Crooks the Big Heist is uh, the kind of game that is right in my wheelhouse. It is squad-based, you know, team-based strategy and tactics. A little bit like XCOM, but the closest analog is definitely more Invisible Link because it's about being stealthy uh, as opposed to just murdering people. It's a little bit less elegant, but it's also not uh, turn-based like Invisible Ink is. It's possible real-time, almost like... Uh, you could consider it almost like an EU4 style or something like that. It's kind of a novel gameplay style. It's a little rough around the edges right now, but there's some cool stuff going on here. And actually, as I played more of it and kind of got in touch with the game's uh, quirks a little bit, let's put it that way, I found myself actually having a, a pretty decent amount of fun. So let's hit continue story here. I played about an hour and a half of this so far, uh, which represents uh, like four missions, and a couple of them I've done over just to try to get all of the um, all of the objectives, which I've not really done very well at. But we'll do a mission that I've already done here, just so that we have some familiarity. First thing I want to point out is that um, the game has a really good sense of style. It's set in the 1970s in San Francisco, so it's got kind of a cool, uh, you know, disco vibe. Actually, I think it's the 1960s maybe, but it's like the transition between the decades, I think. It's got kind of a cool counterculture sort of like um, cult film sort of vibe going on with it, uh, like exploitation films and stuff like that. Uh, it's It's got a really good sense of style, and there's not that many games set in this era. All I can think of is like, I don't know, No One Lives Forever is sort of set in the same era. Uh, it's it's uh, kind of a cultural time that is not really mined that much when it comes to games. 13 is maybe a little bit like that. Remember that old David Duchovny cel-shaded shooter, cell -shaded shooter like 12 years ago? Anyway, um... We'll get started here, and there's some cool uh, staging and narrative and cutscenes and stuff like that as well that explain it. It's got a really good sense of style. It's set in San Francisco, in case you couldn't tell, um, based on all the miles or all the um, landmarks that they have going on here. A reel of seven inches or a fistful of pink feathers? Which one should we do? Um, let's do... Mail for the snowman's a little tricky. Let's do a reel of seven inches just to start with here. Maybe there'll be a cutscene to open it up. Maybe not. Maybe there'll just be a loading screen. The Western Bay Bank. That's where we'll find the circuit diagrams for the alarm system in the Museum of Modern Art. In the main vault, the curator seems to be anticipating thieves. Think he knows Murray? Maybe it's thanks to Murray's connections that the Luna Stone is on exhibition again. The curator might have caught wind of a thing like that. We'll make our way in through the sewage system. I'm going to talk over this for a second, you can read the subtitles. What I want to point out, because we might not do another mission like this, is that um, it has a really cool, almost like Rainbow Six style thing going on, where it gives you uh, an overview of how the level actually looks, and gives you a little bit of time to plan out what's going on in advance. So it's not like you're going in sight on scene unless you want to. You can actually take some time uh, and, and look at the layout of the level. It's basically a puzzle game, um, but it's a puzzle game in the sense that, like, it's not, like, segmented by individual levels, it's like sequential puzzles. You solve this puzzle, that opens this door, it lets you get in here. And there's multiple ways that you can accomplish the objectives, so having the ability to kind of have a bird's eye view of the different approaches that you can take is really cool. It's not a perfect heist game, um, but it does some cool stuff, at least in its current state, it's not a uh, perfect heist game. But it's cool in that it gives you this kind of, like, almost Tom Clancy style way to plan out your missions, which I like. We'll use the archives for a little game of hide-and-seek. When we have the circuit diagrams, we need to reach the elevator without being seen. And then, we escape over the rooftops. Alright, so that's the briefing for the whole level, basically. We can also take some time, if we wanted to, um, to just, like, basically look at the camera system in the game. And, uh, or of the level and be like, okay, so what are we gonna do? We see that we start here. What are our objectives? Well, our objectives are to get this, which is like the blueprints that we're gonna need to do our next mission, uh, and then get to the exit, which is this elevator right here. So let's look at this. We gotta get these. It's behind this locked door. 
If we mouse over this, the game does a really good job of actually making a really accessible interface. Um, so I can look at this and be like, okay, that's connected to this switch over here. This switch I need to hit in order to open this door. Alright, so how do I hit that switch? Well, first we got to get in through one of these doors. This door is connected to that switch. This door is connected to that switch. So now i got to hit this switch, but how do we get in there? Well, this door is connected to that switch. It looks like it's connected to this door. Or sorry, it's, yeah, this door right here, but this door is connected to this switch. So this is... Um, Simultaneously a big strength of the game and also in a way it's my number one problem is that the mechanic system of the game Pretty much at least in the early game especially but we'll check out a later level that has a little bit more complexity There's a lot of like switch puzzles and stuff like that which makes it a little bit less of a stealth game uh, In actual practice like invisible ink is all about knowing enemy patterns and staying out of their way Only knocking them out when you have to and you know getting in getting out basically that it was like a stealth puzzle box. This is much more of like a literal puzzle box where it, it pretty much comes down to like a lot of switches and stuff like that. But it's still pretty cool uh, as you'll see when we get started here. So we can select a, a different crew for each mission, but we don't have uh, anybody else unlocked yet. We get more probably in the next mission that we're going to do actually. Um, and each person has a skill. So if you look at uh, Rufus here, Rufus has knockout. Enables Rufus to knock out normal guards and fast guards without using any tools. So he can be like our muscle basically. And then we have uh, Bishop. He can pick security doors and strong boxes. So uh, you don't actually need to hit a switch or have a key to open some doors. Bishop can do it for you. And Cleopatra is fast. Enables Cleopatra to sneak behind guards without them taking notice. And also she is uh, much faster. So we're going to take these uh, units because we have them. And there's also um, a variety of kind of uh, mission tools that we can take. So we can take a crowbar, which allows us to open a strong box or a security door in five seconds. Maybe Bishop's not on our mission, so we want to take crowbars instead. Adrenaline helps us run faster. Um, chloroform helps us knock out a guard in case we don't have muscle, or maybe like one of our non-muscly people encounters a guard. Sneaky Souls allows us to sneak behind guards' backs. As you can see, like a lot of these are basically just active items that we can take to compensate for not having certain skills unlocked yet. You unlock those skills as you play through the campaign. Camera Jammer is a little different. Deactivates a camera for 30 seconds, making it possible to pass through its vision cone. Uh, this can be really useful, but we can also usually just take out computers to have the cameras, uh, get knocked out. So I'm going to take nothing to try to make as much money as possible, and we'll just play our heist here. So the core gameplay of the game is by far the most interesting thing uh, that's going on here, because it really is like... Oh, I actually accidentally unpaused there. It really is unlike most other, uh, you know, squad-based tactics games, which mostly come down to it being like XCOM. Even Invisible Link, it has a, a meaningful change on its formula. Uh, because it's so stealth focused as opposed to just combat. Um, but it's still pretty XCOM-y. This is totally different. Except for the fact that you're controlling a whole squad. But you're controlling them all at the same time and it's not turn-based, which is interesting. It's almost a little bit like a single player Monaco with the ability to pause. Alright, so let's plan out our attack here. Um, we This guy never moves from this vision cone here. So he's always going to be watching this door. Now we can get by him, maybe, using this door, but it's not going to be super easy. So here's what I'm thinking. Let's set up uh, Rufus, and we'll put Rufus here, and then I'm going to have him wait. And then I'm going to have him knock this guy out. So basically what this means, well, let's set up everybody else first. Um, Cleopatra, if I click on her, it is a little bit of a sore spot for me that you can't just hit tab to change units like that. Is kind of like an industry standard. I'm going to have Cleopatra wait here. And then she's going to hit this switch. Which will deactivate this. And uh, I'm going to have Bishop go over here. And then wait for now. And then he's going to unlock this locked door. Okay, so what this will do when I unpause. Is uh, they'll get into their positions. Where basically they have their, their places to wait. And then they'll have like this flag, and when I click on that, they'll accomplish their next objectives. Alright, so everybody's in position. We're gonna have uh, Rufus go for the kill. As he goes for the kill, I'm just gonna look at this guard right here. As he goes for the kill, we're gonna have Bishop come out, and he's gonna start hacking this door. And now that this guy's being taken out and his vision cone is gone, we're gonna have Cleopatra go over and hit the switch. So this shouldn't create any noise, so this is actually uh, going to be fine. You can see there's like a timeline on him uh, dealing with this. So now, um, we also need to hit this switch, as we know, because we need to open this door in order to hit this door, open this door, and when this door is open, then we can open this door and get to the plans. So, um, it, it really is like sequential kind of switch puzzles here, which is a little bit of a thin conceit for a game like this. It's a little bit, um, cumbersome, inelegant is the way that maybe I'd describe it, but it doesn't take too much away from the experience, and it, it really is, uh, novel, and even, dare I say, somewhat exhilarating when you execute a plan and it actually works out appropriately. 
All right, so we have uh, we've gone through this door now. So we need to disable this camera so Cleopatra can get to the switch. By the way, this guy will stay down as long as we don't hit the flag on Rufus. Like, part of the knockout is that he just stays down for good. So we're going to come down here with Bishop. And uh, we're going to hack into this thing right here. Now this guy shouldn't turn around. He should be going all the way down to the end of the cycle down here. Alright, so we've disabled that camera. As a result of disabling this camera, now Cleopatra can hit this switch, which will allow us to get up in here. Can we get in though? That's connected to that switch. Okay, this, this mission did get a little confusing for me for a while. Okay, so now this door is openable. We should probably go hide uh, Bishop here for now. Because I think we need to wait for this guard to get past. Alright, so let's take a brief moment here. The door is closed by themselves. Which again, after playing Invisible Link, is a hard habit to get into. Let's look at what we want to do next. Now we will, you know, you get uh, a bonus based on how fast you complete a mission. So this is going to be slower for us. This is a strong box, by the way, or a high spoils. There's strong boxes and high spoils that are technically different. Um, the the strong boxes are worth more, the high spoils are worth less, but um, they, they're basically optional money sinks that you can pick up. Mo not money sinks, you know what I mean, though. They're bonus objectives, if you will. Alright, so I'm going to pause quickly. I need to get in through this door, which actually uh, is just a normal door. So as long as I just wait for this dude to walk past me, Bishop should be able... And let's set this up, because this is part of the satisfying thing, is actually, like, setting the plane in motion simultaneously. We're going to have him wait here, and then he's going to come in through here. All right, so we're just going to click on this flag when we know that it's safe for him to get out. And I think he's probably out of that guard's radius now, so let's just have him run. And they don't really run, only Cleopatra runs, but you get the idea. Uh, okay, so he's going to come in here, and he's going to hit this switch, which is going to open this door and that door. So we actually have to be a little careful. By the way, we're missing all sorts of tools here. Again, I kind of find this, I'm going to pause so I don't lose my bonus, which should tell you that I actually do care about how I do on the mission, but um, I, I don't necessarily like the idea that there's kind of like these big floating tokens that are like, when you pick it up, that's a tool. Like, in a way, it makes literally no sense that they would have like, well, I mean, the key, maybe I can understand, but the fact that they would have like sneaky shoes over here. I get that it's a game, but it's such an like overt, transparent way of doing game design, which is not to say that I can do any better, but you know, in in a game like um, Mark of the Ninja, for example, another stealth game, a different genre ostensibly, but anyway, um, you know, it, you might need a key to get into somewhere, but what you do is you go incapacitate a guy and he has a key in his pocket or something like that. For there to just be like, you know, a stick of dynamite or something or some sneaky shoes on the level is is very much like, we're making a game, you need these power-ups, it's, it's kind of like an 80s arcade way, and I don't like necessarily that route of solving the problem. I still think it's it's fun, but this stuff is just a little bit, um, it, it makes it a little bit more cumbersome for me, I guess. Um, and I don't really use the equipment anyway, which is actually, I guess, kind of a positive thing, because you can do it in more of a purist style, but I guess those are there to be like, ah, if you need some help, here you go. So, by the way, we get scored by, based on a couple of things. One is time. Missions, uh, like, doing the missions can take, like, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on your, your skill, maybe even longer. Uh, the, the email we got said, like, f they could take 45 minutes, maybe if there's later ones that are, that are harder. Um, and you also get scored based on the amount of optional money you have and your heat meter. When you get recognized or a camera spots you or something, your heat meter goes up, and that gives you less money, uh, because you have to spend more money in bribes. It's very much like the Hitman style of, kind of, like, uh, you know, scoring you. So when we open this, this is going to open that door, but also this door. This door needs to open this way. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. Bishop, I'm going to have you open this. Later on, by the way, we encounter timed switches. And timed switches um, force you to be a little bit more creative with the way that you do things. Now we got to be careful because the guard that's coming around here... If we mouse over them, we should be able to see their pattern. You know, they stop on that corner, so they're going to be able to see into here, so we got to be careful about that. But we can at least, uh, well, I don't really want to open that door. I want to open this door, which is connected to this switch. Hmm. Well, we'll hack into this thing. By the way, these are air vents. Another uh, squad member that we have can, can do something with those. I wonder if we can be stealthy enough to open this without this guy seeing us. I do like how everything is overt, almost in kind of like an invisible ink way. Um, you know, we know exactly the size of this guy's vision cone. Ooh, this is actually very dangerous. Cleopatra! Cleopatra, run! 
Thank you. Um, we know the guy, the size of the guy's vision cone. We can see like, um, oh shit, they did see me, which is really bad for business. Um, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this one. I think if I hide here, I might be able to get away with it. But I guess he just saw me slightly there, so we're gonna have him do this, and then when he runs. Through here, yeah. This, oh no, no, no! Not not you. Sorry, not you. You go back. You're in a fine position. Um, I'm gonna have this guy maybe come down here and knock this guy out. But we're gonna make sure we don't get caught by his vision cone. You know, guards do get uh, suspicious and they will investigate. Uh, they're they're pretty dumb, which I think isn't. Excuse me, where are you going? I think is not even necessarily meant as an insult. Like the guards in a stealth game kind of have to be dumb. It, although this guy is gonna catch me. <laughs> um, I think if, if, if they catch me, I just fail the mission. So I'm really hoping that we can actually get away from this, and maybe I can have uh, maybe I can have Rufus knock him out if I run fast enough. But I think we're gonna get caught. Oh yeah, we're gonna get caught here. He's been he put him in the Vulcan sleeper hold. Okay, that was my bad. Um, we should be able to load like our last save there, or like our last action there. That was completely my bad, 100%. I didn't think he'd be able to see me through that tiny peephole there, but this will load like the last time the game auto-saved, which is actually gonna be way too far, like close here for us to be able to do anything. All right, Rufus, I think we can still salvage this if we just have you like sprint through here. Rufus! Okay, what if I have Bishop run in here and Cleopatra just makes like a clean break for it? Maybe Rufus can get in there and knock him out? I mean, the guards don't have guns, so... Oh, we're gonna get him! We're gonna get him! We're gonna get him! Come on! <laughs> Cleopatra! Uh, Rufus, could you have more than like a leisurely walk as you try to catch him? Alright, there we go. So we got him. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that we knocked it out of the park there, but that's okay. Bishop, you can come in here now. Alright, so next step is gonna be disabling these cameras. We actually got very lucky that that worked out for us, because it could have gone terribly wrong. Um, but luckily, it didn't. But we are, our heat meter did go up, so we're not going to be in uh, as good of a position financially after completing the mission. So let's have Bishop go uh, activate this, and then open up this door, and then we'll have uh, Cleopatra work her way down. Because we did uh, disable those cameras by using this computer here. And yes, that is like a 1970s style computer. Alright, before I pick this up, I should point out that we, it's a, actually a, it's a pretty narrative focused game. It's got kind of like an Italian job style uh, story to it right now. Where basically we all used to be on a crew together like five years ago. And then there was this guy Murray. And you can tell right by his name that he's not going to be a cool dude. But he um, backstabbed us. We all got thrown in jail. And we went our separate ways. But now we're coming together because it's the like the heist for the same jewel, basically, this moon rock that uh, we got caught for last time. So we're like, we gotta steal it so Murray doesn't steal it. It actually, the story is told in a very convincing and, and stylish and very presentable way that actually has kept me somewhat engaged here. The, the writing and voice acting is, it's decent, it's not amazing, like it's not Oscar quality, but it's pretty good. Um, the, the story is actually a fairly driving element for the game, so I hope that you can sort of hear what's going on here. Um, and that, that's part of the fun of it, because obviously, mechanically, the game is a little... Uh, it, it has its own unique style, let me put it that way, and it took me a long time to kind of come to terms with that, but once I did, I, I started being like, you know, the possible real-time nature of the game is kind of cool. But the story helps sell it uh, if you're not 100% into the gameplay. So it's not like we were really double-crossed, but this is like our reveal that we know Murray's on to us. He knows that we're trying to stop him. Um, this part is just a touch tricky, but I think we can do it. Let's have Rufus, uh, he's gonna knock this dude out, which is gonna give him like 
10 seconds of being on the ground. Rovas, get over here. And then we gotta try to knock this guy out. And we gotta get on this elevator to finish the mission. Uh, which, which should be really easy, by the way. I mean, I'm assuming this mission is kind of on the easy side because of the fact that we're... Uh... Oh. One sec. I'm assuming this mission is a little bit on the easy side because we're still in the relative early game for sure. Alright, so this door is about to open and I'm gonna have Rufus knock this guy out and then we're all gonna get on the elevator. You don't have like a punishment for knocking people out, so I sort of feel like, why wouldn't we, you know? Cleopatra! Cleopatra, slow down! Oh, yeah, we just walked right up on that guy. Okay, sweet. Didn't even need the sneaky souls that time. Uh, let's get uh, you onto the waypoint, Cleopatra. Let's get you onto the waypoint, Bishop. And let's get you onto the waypoint, Rufus. And we'll go. And that should be the end of the mission. And honestly, I think we did relatively well there. I want to do one more mission over the course of this, but I don't really want to do a long one. Um... But maybe I will anyway, and this could just end up being like a long video, and I don't think there's necessarily a problem with that. Let's see how we did. So we got 444 as our time. Zero out of four uh, briefcases, zero out of two strong boxes. So I did pretty terribly in terms of the loot that we got, but uh, Inconspicuous is relatively good. It got a decent stealth bonus, uh, and actually did worse than the time that I sight read the level, so that's a little annoying, but... Does this give us extra money anyway, even though it's like the second time we played through the level? We're about to find out. Bribe money is like, you know... Because we got spotted, we have to pay the guard $90, I guess? It seems like a little bit of a, another kind of, like, overtly gamey thing, but whatever, it's fine. It's like in Hitman, it's like, hey, you you mass murdered, like, ten people in this city square. Um, you, we gotta spend, like, $3,000 to cover that up. Anyway, it just doesn't seem that realistic to me. So there is some, uh, some story stuff here that I'm just gonna skip over, but when there's cutscenes, I'll play them. Um, let's do, let's do Mail for the Snowman. And I'm just going to start the high stop, and I'm going to skip the briefing, even though I think the briefing is one of the stronger elements of the game, uh, because I want to get into it and show you a, a slightly more difficult kind of puzzle box. Because this is really where the game started to get less simplistic for me, and, and more uh, kind of strategic and interesting. Again, this is just more briefing stuff. And that's the second floor. This is a multi-stage level, which is a little bit more difficult. And we're, we're just going to select the, the normal crew, because that's all we have right now. But we get, uh, we get a technician who I think can deal with, like, camera stuff. Uh, on the next level. Maybe not camera stuff, maybe he just busts down, like, doors by himself, I can't remember. You played him as, or you play with him in the tutorial, but it's beyond me. Alright, so this level is actually kind of interesting. This is the, uh, front door, but we can't really get in through the front door. Sorry, this is not the front door. One second, let me reconceptualize. This is the front door. Right here. We start over here. Okay. This is the front door, but we can't really get in through the front door because it only opens from the inside. And also, there's these cameras that are watching, and there's that guard outside. So we have a couple of different options. One option is we can get into this side entrance here, which only requires Bishop. But we've got to get rid of the uh, camera, which is locked back here. Another thing we can do is go in through the pool house. Um, so this is the pool house right here, obviously. And I think if we, like, break this door, obviously we want to disable these cameras. So if we break this door, we can walk around and then break in through this one right here. And then we're pretty close to the exit. We just got one simple puzzle to get up to the next floor. But let's start um, by just plotting our waypoints through here. And we want to just make sure that we're avoiding the, uh, the cameras, obviously. Now, we gotta be careful with our sight lines, because it's completely plausible that they could spot us again. This... Oh, jeez. Let's delete that one. It's completely plausible they could spot us again, just through that, um... Through the gaps in the hedgerows here. So maybe it's sensible to chart a course a little bit more like that. Let's unpause. Uh, Cleopatra will get there very quickly. These guys will just walk a little bit, which is a little silly to me, but that's okay. Yeah, she's fine. I think everybody's gonna be fine here. Rufus might clip the edge a little bit, but apart from that, we should be okay. Come on, Rufus. Rufus! Oh, that was very close. Okay. So we made it through to the next level, or the next stage of this level, and we need Bishop, because he can hack through these doors to break this security door. Now, we know that we're gonna need to disable this because it controls so many cameras, so this guard is gonna need to get knocked out, which is where, um, our other friend here is going to come in. Rufus. So you're gonna go hack this door... It's not really hacking, but you know what I mean. And then you are going to come in here and break that dude's face. And I'm going to go take Cleopatra over here. Just to get everybody in position. 
All right, actually, now, Cleopatra, you should uh, disable this camera so that we can move out into the pool house here. I'm going to try to do that pool house approach, and we might as well take this uh, strong box key just in case we find a strong box. It would be good to have. And what's this other one? Is it chloroform? So we can use the chloroform to uh, knock out a guard, which actually might become uh, important depending on who we use to solve some of these puzzles. All right, we've done the obvious thing and disabled the... Uh, Disabled the switches out here, or sorry, disabled the cameras out here. Where is this camera connected? It's connected to that one in there. Well, how the heck are we going to get around that that bucket of syrup? I don't know if it's going to be possible. We should have taken a camera jammer if we were going to do that one. Um, okay, okay, we can still do this. What is this connected to? Oh, that one. I didn't do anything there. Okay, wait a minute. You actually, I'm going to delete your objectives. You are actually going to disable this, which is going to disable all these cameras, and then you might just hang out on top of that dude for like another few minutes. Okay, now those cameras are done and we can go in through the side entrance. Alright, so you're going to come back this way. Let me make sure I got this right. Good, yeah, he's on top of him, so we're fine. Alright. Set Cleopatra up like right here. Oh, that's the wrong side. She will definitely be arrested. Set her up here, and we'll set Bishop up like here. Now we can have Rufus, after we disable these cameras, Rufus can come through the other way. And that should be fine. Okay, now here's where it might be a touch tricky. Let's just have Bishop delete his move and put him behind these trees so he's less likely to be spotted. Uh, I don't like this at all. Please. Well, she has the chloroform, though. Maybe if we get spotted, it's not the end of the world. But I think she's, like, perfectly standing in the blind spot. Oh, my God. Oh, no, she got spotted. Okay, knock him out. Knock him out. Yeah, use the chloroform. Okay. So he'll be out for, like, 30 seconds. So now, even though we got spotted and our heat meter went up, at least we didn't fail the mission here. And, um... I don't know. No, she can't just stand on top of him. Okay, so we gotta be careful about that. Alright, where are these cameras connected? They're connected in here, so we're gonna have Bishop go for that next. These guards, by the way, when they wake up, they're a little stupid about it. They're like, oh, it must have been the wind. You know the you know the deal, I'm assuming, at this point. Let's also have Bishop hack this one, or open this one, and Cleopatra will come in here. I'm not worried too much about strong boxes. I mostly just want to, you know, complete the mission. We're going to try to disable this camera so that Rufus can come in through the side entrance here. Please don't see me. Please don't see me. He is not going to see me. He's not going to see me. Despite his black belt in karate. Hey, hey. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, yes, this is the computer that controls the cameras. I mean, Bishop is, like, really useful. Cleopatra is fast, which is fine. And Rufus is really useful, but I kind of feel like a man who opens 80% of the doors is, is a pretty uh, strong part of the overall operation here. So we made it past, like, the first wave of puzzles here. Let's have uh, Bishop come in and do that. And now... You should be able to just walk over here, my friend. Is he going? He's going. Yeah, the cameras are disabled. So uh, as long as uh, Bishop opens that door, you should be able to get in. Now this level is the first level that actually has uh, timed switch puzzles, which you're going to see next when we get to those lasers. I think we could just run through them, but it's a really bad idea. Yo, Rufus. This is not a leisurely stroll in the park, man. Um... And then after he finishes that, which he just did, we'll have him get the strong box, because why not, right? It's extra money. Alright, we got everybody on the inside here. But yeah, th this is where the puzzles start to become a little bit more complex, which is cool. Um, they, they do kind of have, like, set solutions, but at the same time, I think it's kind of interesting about this one. Um, so there's our strong box. We're going to get some amount of money out of it. Might as well get this other one. What is this one? Toggle switch. Deactivates and activates connected security systems. This one is just like those laser beams here. I don't think I'm actually going to take advantage of it, but there must be like a another way in or something like that, or a strong box or something over here. Yeah, there's a strong box in there, uh, which I'm not particularly concerned with at this point. Let's let's get a move on here. It's going to be a long episode here. Okay, so we got everybody. What's the next stage of the plan? Well, we need to get here. The easiest way to do that is going to be through here, but we need someone to activate this switch. So in a weird way, we don't have two people walking through here, right? No, we don't. Okay. So I think what we actually need to do is, uh, is we're going to have Rufus knock this guy out and then sit on him. And then Bishop's got to unlock like a lot of doors. 
That's pretty much the way this is gonna work. So you're gonna go here, and then Bishop is just gonna kinda like be around. This is gonna fuck with our heat meter something fierce, but I think that's okay. All right, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I can knock him out before we get spotted. Yeah, okay, he didn't get noticed. The reason we need Bishop over here is because there's so many of these doors that need locking. I'm gonna put, or need unlocking, sorry. I'm gonna send Cleopatra in here to basically solve the puzzle for me because she's fast. And then she'll be able to make like a quick getaway and get in through the front door and we'll be able to go up to the next level. I wanted to show off this level after the first one because there's a little bit more like complexity with this one. And you know, you, you do end up using the squad mechanics a little bit more, which I think is, it, it shows off the game well. And this is really kind of the first mission where I got the game. It was like, you know, the game's got some some quirks to it, is a very polite way to put it. But at the same time, you know, in spite of its unevenness, there's a lot of charm and there's actually a lot of fun kind of strategy puzzle solving that goes on with the gameplay that I think is, uh, you know, wh whether it makes it worth the asking price, which is a cost that I'm not aware of, it is remains to be seen in August. However, I, I found myself having a good time with it. Uh, nonetheless, where at first I was kind of like, this sort of seems like a less elegant Invisible Ink. And then, you know, the more I played, the more I was like, eh, it's actually, it's pretty fun. Now, you, you do have the, you know, there's an ask at the start. You know, you have to learn um, how to speak the game's language. So we're just going to quickly disable these cameras as well, because we might as well. Apparently this guy can't see me through the windows, which is actually, like, really nice to know. Alright, so what do we do now? Um... Now we trade spaces. Bishop comes back here, basically. Cleopatra goes here. You might be wondering, what the heck are you doing? Like, you got the puzzle all solved here. But I don't. It's actually a little bit more, uh... A little bit more tricky than that. Because if I mouse over the switch, you can see... Deactivates connected security systems for a short amount of time in 1.6 seconds. Resets after 5.0 seconds. So these, if I hit the switch on these, these come back after 5 seconds. So I actually have to, you know, you might be saying, like, you've been playing the game not really that possible and, like, issuing orders all the time. It's kind of like forsaking the nature of it somewhat. Not really. Now we're actually forced into it, which I think is actually cool. So let's have Cleopatra hit the switch. And as she hits the switch... We can have uh, Rufus and Bishop go here. Okay, there we go. They, they should have more than enough time to get across, even though they walk so slowly. And at the same time, we need Cleopatra to make an exit, because this guy's about to wake up. So we're going to have uh, her. She probably shouldn't run that way, if I'm being honest with you. Let's, uh, let's delete this waypoint and this one. And we'll have her go this way. Yeah. And then we'll have her go outside. She might as well pick this up. This is why I had her do this, because she's fast. Alright, so we got two people here. Um, almost ready to complete the mission. We just need... We need Bishop here to open the switch for her on her way out. And then all Cleopatra needs to do is sneak around here. And by the way, it's good to pick up this equipment, even if we don't think that we're going to use it. It's smart to pick it up, because uh, we can sell it back at the end of the mission. I think she should actually be able to make it here. Yeah. She can't open the door yet, but we can have Bishop open the door, like so. Also got a save game there. I d it's weird because it's not turn-based. I almost wish there was an undo button, which doesn't really make sense in a real-time game. But sometimes, as you saw in the last mission, they load you into a situation that's real tough. But we managed to make it out of it. Alright, so this is the second floor. Our objective here is going to be... Uh, we gotta write a letter for this guy basically saying, hey, you know, fudge off with your business practices, you hoser. And then, um, we gotta disappear over here. So, pretty much everything here revolves around getting inside of this room, because it only opens from the outside. Like, this door has a switch that only opens from this side. Um, and then just running away, basically, at the end of it. Disabling the cameras in the meantime as well. Okay. This one's a little tricky in that, uh, I think we have to trigger an alarm. Because if we don't trigger the alarm, um, there's no other way to get through here. Like, that staircase is just for show. And we we have to walk through, like, one direction here. So I'm pretty sure we have to walk Bishop through this alarm. Luckily, it's short. You can see, like, it, it has, like, a radius on it, on the sound. But luckily, there's no guards within it. So I guess it's, this one's all about triggering it um, when you... Please go. No, please go. Thank you. This one's all about triggering it uh, at the right moment. Okay, so we've made it through the first door, and then this switch is going to close this door. Which is... Oh! Yes, okay. 
Then we're gonna wait for this guard to come in, and we're probably gonna try to knock him out in here. But these guards have, like, the same path, I think. This guy stops here. This guy... Oh, no, this guy does not stop here. So we actually should be able to knock him out relatively easily. Let's, um... Let's have Rufus on this waypoint. He's gonna wait for a minute. And then he's gonna knock this... No. Delete, please. Then he's gonna knock this dude out. Like so. And Bishop is gonna hit the switch. He's gonna be looking at us for a while, which is gonna mess up our heat meter here, but I think it should be okay. We could have also had him hide in the door. Alright, he's turning around. We open the door. Rufus, go get him. Like, faster though. Fast? No, this is bad. Okay. We messed it up miserably. I also never hit the button. Cleopatra, run. Don't get stuck in the door, Cleopatra! Okay. Um, also, oh, you please stop. I've made a terrible mistake. Okay. We gotta get inside of this room. So we're just gonna wait for Bishop here, who is gonna hit the switch again, and then he's gonna go open this. And then we're gonna hide in here and we're gonna ambush that guy, because we wanna disable the cameras, but we also need one of the guards to be taken out of the equation. So, we'll hack this. We could have used Cleopatra's crowbar, by the way, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Will the crowbar work here? Open strong boxes and security doors. No, it, it does not. Uh, which makes sense, otherwise we could just like complete the mission with our crowbar, which would be a little silly. Okay, now we're in here, why don't you go over here and get ready to deactivate the cameras, and Rufus, you go over here, because I want you to be closer, and Cleopatra, you go over here, because you're not doing anything right now. So basically, we're just going to wait for this guy to come back. By the way, there is a puzzle here, if we hit all three switches, we can get this uh, high spoils, it's another 200 bucks. I don't think it's strictly necessary for what we're doing right now, but you can, you know, quite clearly see how it would be done. Those air vents, by the way, I think I mentioned it, but they're used by another squad member that we do not have access to yet. They give you uh, the ability to travel through them to get from room to room, but um, we haven't unlocked that character yet, except for the tutorial. So, you know, we're not doing the tutorial. And now we wait. This guy... is going to be very easy for us to get. We're just going to pin him and then basically complete the rest of the mission. We'll open this door so that Rufus can come in this way and then we'll be out from the balcony. This was actually a pretty successful one and uh, a pretty satisfying one as well. You know, a lot of moving parts, but we managed it relatively well. Alright, Rufus. He did not notice us. Oh, he noticed us. But we still choked him out, so that's fine. <laughs> now, and he's also, he's out of sight, so this is even better for us. Um... Where's this guy going now? He's coming back this way, so we should probably be a little careful. Um, we know we're gonna need Bishop to hack through this door. Sometimes I wish there was like a fast forward button as well. So this guy, unfortunately we're at like the exact wrong kind, or exact wrong part of his animation. We have to wait for him to complete like this entire cycle. Does he stop over here? Oh wait, no, no, actually we're not at the exact wrong kind of the cycle, or wrong time of the cycle. If I actually do this, I think I can start to move out, like, right now. He should be able to hack through the security door. One thing I actually didn't try was, like, I wonder if you can just get through that door when it's open. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. But I wouldn't be surprised either way. Alright, so he went through that way. We should be able to get through both of these security doors in the time allotted and then finish off the mission here. So, we'll have uh, Bishop... Let's get to it break down their break pick the lock on this door and we'll have Cleopatra come over here and wait for it basically she should really give some cardio training to the other members of the squad because uh their leisurely pace I get it but at the same time is a little uh it feels weird right that the guy is only moving at like a snail's pace maybe Cleopatra should be on roller skates or something and everybody else should have a jog that just looks slow all right let's pause for a second we're in the room now um Cleopatra can accomplish the objective. Yeah. Bishop can come over here and uh, toggle the switch to open this door and let Rufus in, and then we're pretty much good to go. Probably some voice work here. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Rufus said, knock you out. And then we break our last lock, and I'm pretty sure that this is just going to be a very successful end of the mission here. Cleopatra could have used her crowbar to break that, actually, which would be faster, but it also runs the risk because it has noise associated with it of alerting the guards, so... 
I don't think it really matters either way, but this is like, you know, we've got Bishop, we might as well have him do something for us. Breaking locks appears to be a specialty, and that should be the end of the mission here. And I think this one was a little bit more successful than my last one. It... Oh, a guard is chasing you. That's all right. They must have seen us through the door. Maybe we our stealth bonus got screwed up as a result of that. Our time was not particularly good. We only got one high spoils, no strong box. Oh, so we did get one strong box, sorry. So our loot bonus is actually pretty good. We were still inconspicuous. And uh, our crook score was a new best, 66640. Anyway, we're just going to go back to the city map here. You don't need to see all the stuff that I unlock. You unlock new tools and stuff as time goes on. This is crooks, um, a, a pretty... Oh, I'll shut up and let you watch this. This is the best part. Good thing I've got away with word. Murray thought he could fake us out. He knew we wouldn't sit back and watch him take the Luna Stone from underneath us. We had a feeling that Murray would tip off the cops so that they could catch us with the Luna Stone red-handed. So much for the thieves' code. And that was exactly the plan. We were going to break into the museum, swap the replica for the real Luna Stone. Then the boys would trip the alarm and wait for the cops to get there. We wanted Murray to think we'd made a big mistake. Meanwhile, I would take the Luna Stone with me and keep it hidden from Murray. Then I'd play the fallen heroine and cry about how I just can't get anything right. And while Murray was celebrating his victory, Cesare and I would spring the boys out of the can, make our getaway, and start plotting our revenge. For the escape, we still had an ace in the hole. The real challenge was covering all of our tracks. Murray had friends at the police headquarters, and the heist would be on record at that point. Even the prison guards would know the boys well enough by then to pick them out of a lineup. The plan had a couple of steps and we needed Lobkovitz for all of them. We knew that the chief of police wanted to digitalize all criminal records. That's why we were going to first break into the police headquarters and from there distribute some dummy orders. The order would instruct all precincts in the city to pick up their new computers from a certain company. Namely, our very own shell corporation. The next step was to get our hands on these machines so Lobkovitz could work his magic. As soon as the boys were behind bars, the computers were supposed to destroy their records from the database. Finally, we needed Cesare to dig up some dirt on the warden, which we could use to keep him quiet about the escape. Don Cesare called the plan adventurous. Then he gave us the go. Let's do this, guys. So, I mean, no one would accuse the story of being super realistic, I think, but uh, it, it does have some pulp and some, you know, cult appeal to it that I think is nice. I really like the minimalisticness of this screen, or the minimalism of this screen as well. I don't know what it is. It's, it's irrelevant to the quality of the game, but it reminds me of Mini Metro, and I'm like, I like it. Um, so yeah, this is Crooks. Um, it comes out in, like, seven weeks, six weeks, August 25th. It's one of those things that, uh, as of right now, yeah, of course, keep in mind that I'm pseudo reviewing a game that is work in progress it's uneven uh it, it certainly is not as like polished as something like XCOM or as um, elegant as something like Invisible Ink but it has a certain kind of charm to it as well it, it, it's not necessarily in the same genre as those games it's more of a possible real-time puzzle game in a way it's a game that it, it's Monaco but single player is the way that maybe I would describe it mostly you each have like your own specialist uh, ability or each person on your squad has their own specialist ability and you've got to kind of use them to cooperate with one another to solve these puzzles the puzzles are a little rudimentary again very like transparently gamey a little bit to the point of breaking immersion, or a lot of the point of breaking immersion. But uh, after I spent like 40 minutes with it, and I was kind of lukewarm, a little tepid, I was like, you know what, I actually think that this game's sort of charming. I, I get it. Uh, and I found myself sort of surprisingly uh, wanting to play more and see where the story goes. I think the story is really a, a driving element here. Um, and it's told pretty stylistically. Stylishly? Anyway. Um, consider this uh, at least a wait and see. See what happens when Crooks actually comes out. Uh, I think this is kind of like the perfect game for picking up in a Steam sale, at least in its present state. And that's pretty insulting because the game's not out, but I think it's the, it's a niche game that's not going to appeal to everybody. Uh, a little rough around the edges, but if you uh, are able to find it at a price that tickles your fancy, uh, this might be the kind of thing that you should pay attention to. It's a nice little, uh, you know, amuse-bouche until XCOM 2 comes out, or if you've uh, already finished Invisible Link and you're a sucker for these kind of games. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. There will be a... Maybe a link to the website for Crooks, because I don't think the store page actually has pre-order or anything like that available. It doesn't have a price on it either. Um, but for now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.